am a professional chef, let's see, for about half an hour maybe? Yes, half about half an hour I've been a professional worldwide chef. I make the greatest foods. I mean, people love it. I mean, like, my, I force my parents to try it. They seem to be sick, but yes, I, they love it. They absolutely love it. Now, I will show you one of my best family recipes. And Pete, you will, you will be surprised. You will be surprised. Right, right, let's, let's see. So, what you'll need is three litres of car diesel. Three litres of car diesel. Yes, you can get that from the petrol station. Four gosling pheasants. Try and get that from the pond. They're best there. A partridge in a pear tree. Yes, a partridge in a pear tree. Grated butter. Easy to find. You just get a stick of butter and you grate it. A pint of milk. Delicious stuff. I love it. A kilogram of birch bark. You can head to the forest and chop it off. Fluff from the sofa. I mean, everyone has that. And a handful of bolts. One inch thick, to be precise. So, step one, pour the three litres of diesel into the litre of, into the kilogram, of, what, litre of milk. And you shall create the, what I call, the sauce. Add the, marinate the sauce with the partridge in the pear tree. With, and uh, add the grated butter. Boil this, at a, boil this for about five minutes. And then sprinkle it with gosling feathers. Do a kilogram of birch bark. Um powder it with a with a blender and sprinkle it on top to create a lovely delicious thick sauce get the fluff from the sofa to absorb the last extra liquid and for a serving suggestion cut the handful of bolts each one in half and add them to make an amazing hard lovely delicious food i'm sure your family will love it and thank you Oh, one thing I hate, one thing I absolutely hate is asparagus. I absolutely hate asparagus. It's been in my life for so long. I just hate asparagus. Ooh, I don't know why. I just really don't like it. It's in my heart. My restaurant is in rural England. You probably wouldn't find it. You can obviously look up on Google Maps, but for some reason, I think they blurred it. Why? I don't know. Its reviews are absolutely perfecto. Yeah, don't look at them. Please don't look at them. Uh, hi, I'm Sally Spoonson, and I just wanted to say that I'm I'm really good at baking cookies. It's like the only thing I'm good at making. So um, all you've got to do is you've got to get biscuits, and then you've got to get chocolate sauce, and you've got to pour it in, because that's how you make cookies. Oh, yeah, don't mind like this washing up liquid. Is this one like where my parents forced me to do the washing up? Like, parents always do that, you know? And it was my brother's go, but like, he, he just forced me to do it, which is rude. So what you go do is you take, you take your chocolate sauce, uh, yeah, this is definitely the chocolate sauce, and you pour in your biscuits, which are just, oh, it's green. And that's, that's not meant to happen. The cho oh, th this is the washing up liquid. That, that's not right. Um, uh, and then you put it in the oven and then you have cookies. So now you can poison your evil brothers. Um, it's what's trending right now and you've got to be on the trends. And I got my inspiration from like many pictures of people cooking. Um, I want to try cooking maybe a poisoned cake. Cause like the cookies don't really seem to be poisoning my brother at the moment. Like he seems to just like not notice. I am the Frenchman and I am the greatest cooker of the baguette that has ever been in this entire universe. First, to cook my great baguette, first you must go to your local bakery to cook up to find some ingredients. So what you need to get is a baguette. You head home, then you put your baguette in 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 the oven for 30 seconds. Then when you pull the baguette out, you have your baguette which was cooked totally by you and not by anyone else. So 
win so you can show to all of your friends and families that you are the greatest person at ever at cooking baguettes which can taste so nice and you, everyone will believe that you have made it. So, thank you for listening to my recipe and hope you and thank you and hopefully you rate my blog five stars. Well, it all happened when my parents were in a tragic accident, when a baguette fell on their head and they tragically passed away from a baguette accident. So, I decided to take my revenge on the baguettes by cooking them up and eating them for dinner, for lunch, lunch and breakfast, and all three meals, all three meals a day, baguettes. But I have my blog, which, which, hold, which is called forgetkillers.com where I hope you will like it because it is all about the tragedy of the baguettes which fell to my parents and how good baguettes are even though they are my mortal enemies. So um, my name is Lola and I have two passions in life which are contortion and cooking and unfortunately I'm not a professional chef because nobody wants to hire me because they think I'm not authentic. But anyway, we're going to be doing a mug cake, which is perfect for people who just don't feel like making a cake. You can just make it in a mug, it's really easy. So, you need four tablespoons of flour, I can open the flour. You need one quarter of a teaspoon of baking powder. Well, it won't open, so we'll just have to skip the baking powder. Um, we need four teaspoons of sugar. Four teaspoons of milk. And three teaspoons of peanut butter, or tablespoons. Now you have to mix it and put it in the microwave. And that's it! Well, I first wanted to be a chef when me and my mum were watching Britain's Got Talent and there was a chef and I just really liked it and wanted to, to be a chef. Yes, because you have to learn to be very versatile and when you're cooking you have to be versatile because sometimes you have to improvise. And it should look like this. I can't wait to try it, it looks so delicious and I'm super, super excited to try it. You can look at my Facebook where I post inspirational quotes. My name is Chef Andre and I've been cooking for around seven years now. Um, this dish uh, is an apple pie, uh, apple and blackberry pie which my grandma always bakes when she comes, as she lives in Russia, so when she comes she always makes it. Uh, she inspired me to do cooking. Uh, so in my dish there is, I made some pastry, um, there's apples, baked apples, blackberries, a touch of cinnamon and some uh, honey. So uh, it's really easy, it takes around half an hour and yeah. You can see more recipes in my cookbook pies. Hope you enjoy it, go down in the link in the description to find it. I cook different types, um, not just desserts, I cook like um, breakfast, lunches and dinners and desserts. So. Uh, I like to have this when like the whole family's here and it's cold winter, like next to the fire, and you have this with a touch of ice cream. Hello, I am Chloe, and today I'm going to.
show you how to make a vanilla milkshake. So you'll need two scoops of vanilla ice cream, 200 milliliters of milk, quarter of a teaspoon of strong vanilla extract, and you want to blend it up. And then you get this. this dish when I was just like I really want a milkshake but I can't go out and then I was just like why don't I make my own and I came up with this recipe the perfect occasion for the milkshake is on really really hot days because it's very refreshing and you, if it's like super super hot you can also put an ice cube in it and it won't affect any of the flavors my name is Stefan Stir Fry, and I'm going to be cooking for you today my signature dish, peanut butter scallops coated with guacamole. Now, first, you'll need an avocado, some peanut butter, and scallops. They can be, they can be, they can be raw as well. So, now, what you have to do is you have to get your scallops, and then, would you, and then you have to coat them in the peanut butter and then put another layer of, uh, um, crush the avocado and put another layer of that around it. And when you cut it open, there should be three layers of food and it will taste immaculate. It should look something like this. I got interested in cooking when I went to a farm one day and I found a broccoli and, and it just inspired me to cook. Um, you can find me, Stephen Stirfry, at 8pm on the BBC every, th every Thursday. So, my name is Miss Mushroom and today I'm making for you a carrot cake and a banana milkshake. So, how you make the carrot cake? You go to the shops and buy a carrot cake. How do you make the banana milkshake? So, you get bananas, get milk, and just blend it together. That's how you make a banana milkshake. That's basically it. I've just got a new book called Everyday Cooking and Things You Can Buy by Mish Mushroom. I've never cooked anything before and this cookbook is about people who don't want to cook, who are lazy, like me. Hello, my name is Chef Anne and today I'm going to be preparing one of my signature dishes, the Ellie Smoothie. You can have it any day, any time, anywhere, and you can put anything in it. So, you need to pick four or five ingredients. I am going to be adding some uh, maths worksheets here because, I mean, we need to stay smart in quarantine. So let's add them in. Uh, we are also going to be adding a carrot, you don't need to peel it, it's fine. Pop that in there. We are also going to be adding some vitamins. You've got to stay healthy, you know. And uh, my good old friend Donald uh, thinks we should uh, fill, our, fill up our bodies with chemicals and bleach and soap. So I'm obviously going to be adding some soap. Uh, and last of all, I'm going to be adding a hairband to tie it all together. So, now you just need to put the lid on. And stop blending. But you know what? It's going to make a really loud sound and it's going to be quite distracting for me. So, here's one I made earlier. Let's give it 
to be as, as proud as me um, be sure to check this recipe out go make it because it's so fun and you don't need to go to the shops and waste money because what's the point in that when you have loads of amazing ingredients right here at home anyway thanks for watching my name is chef onion and i am 64 years old and I've been cooking for about 63 years since I was one really. Today I'm going to show you how to make a 30 second chocolate bar. All you need is a chocolate bar, a bowl and that's really it. Okay and a spoon. Don't forget the spoon. First take the bowl, melt the chocolate bar in the microwave for 10 seconds, put it in the bowl, mix it with the spoon, now put it into a mould, oh I forgot the mould, you have to have a mould as well, put it in the mould, set it in the freezer for 10 minutes. Voila! A chocolate bar! Well, like I said, I was one years old when I wanted to be a chef and I saw my great 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 grandfather cook a meal. You see, my family's in the chocolate business. So I decided I want to be a part of this. So I decided I want to be a chef making chocolate bars. If you want to make my delicious food, go to YouTube, go to Safari, go to your phone, go to anything you want, you'll find my recipes. My name is... Mr. Nobody, and I am one of the greatest chefs on earth. And today I'm going to show you how to make an, no, I'm not going to show you how to make an cookies. I'm going to make you an Eckers cake. And it's a thing, it's, it's like a little round cake with raisins inside. Okay, so I'm going to show you. And the most, the world's most beautiful Eccles cakes ever. Ridiculous. Amazingly fast. Made. First, I was about becoming a chef two days ago. And I looked in a cookery book of my mum's and I saw how this recipe, and I kept on making it every five minutes. And I got so good at it, that I can just do it now. Like that. You can eat this every five minutes if you like them. You will like them. Guaranteed, 100%. They're delicious. <laughs> 